What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to properly use Photoshop's gradient. Now I know this was challenging when I first used it and it could be all topsy-turvy when you think about it or you just probably don't know how to use it overall. But I'm here to show you guys how to use it and what Photoshop does in terms of creating a gradient. So right here I have my picture of mountains from my how to draw mountains video. Link to that will be in the card if you want to go and check that out. But for this video, I'm just going to be providing just like a basic blue sky gradient to this mountains drawing. So I already loaded that into Photoshop. I got rid of the backgrounds. So all I have right now is just the mountains themselves. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer. I'm going to name it sky. And I'm going to move that down because the sky is going to be behind it. So let's go over here to this paint bucket tool. And if you click and hold on it, you'll find the gradient tool. So we're going to click on that and up here you'll get all the different methods of creating a gradient. So right here would be your colors and right here would be the different ways for different colors to blend into each other. So right here would be linear gradient, this is radial and then the rest is angle, reflected and diamond gradient. So what we'll be working with today would be linear gradient because like I said we're creating a sky and a sky wouldn't look like any of these other gradients here so we're just going to be working with linear today. And as you can see there's like a little drop down menu here so I'm going to click on that and as you can see there's a bunch of these folders here and those are preset gradients that Photoshop gives you. So let me open a few of them and they're organized by color. So right here would be the basics. So there's like a white to a transparent, black into a white. So that's what be that would be the basics. And then we have blues, we have purples, pinks, and reds, and so on. So I'm not gonna use any of the gradients that are in these folders. I'm gonna create my own. And as you can see, I already created some prior to making this video, but I'm gonna show you how to create your own custom gradient so that way you can preset your own and organize it into any of these folders if you want. So to do that, I'm gonna get out of here for a second and then I'm gonna click on this little thumbnail for the gradient. So I'm gonna click on that. And then over here, this little window pops up called Gradient Editor. And this is where you can create your own gradient. And just a little heads up for you guys, because I learned this the hard way. But when you draw your gradient onto your Photoshop document, you tend to go from top to bottom. But sometimes when you're setting your gradient onto this gradient editor tool, you have a tendency to put the lightest color over here and the darkest color over here. So Photoshop kind of reads left to right, kind of like how we read a book. So when we create this gradient and we want to draw it into our Photoshop document from top to bottom, that's what we're going to have to set onto this little uh, toolbar timeline here or whatever. So the darkest color would be over here and the lightest color would be over here. And as you can see, what I have here is in reverse. So that's what I mean when I said I learned this the hard way. So like I said from the beginning, we're going to create a gradient for these mountains. So I'm going to click on one of these little buttons here. Those are called stops. And that indicates the different colors within the gradient. So I'm going to click on this little box here. And then over here loads the color. So right here in this little drop box, you can choose whatever color you want within your gradient. So I'm going to click on this box. I'm just going to make it into a very saturated blue color. So I think this will be a good color. And already it's loaded onto the gradient. So that way you can see what it looks like before you hit OK on this window. But um, I'm satisfied with that so I can hit OK. But if you want to save this swatch for later, you can hit add to swatches. And you can give it a name and hit OK, but I'm not going to do that today. So we're going to hit Cancel. And then since I'm satisfied with this color, we can hit OK. And then over here, we're going to give that some sort of a light blue color, like a light variation of this blue color here. So I'm going to click on this stop, and then I'm going to click on the color. And then I'm going to come up here and go to this light blue color. I don't want to go directly to a white, but let's go with this like light blue here. So I'm going to hit OK. And as you can see, there's like a little gradient going on here. But you also may notice that there is like a little diamond in between these two stops. And that indicates where these colors are going to be blended. So do you want them blended closer to the lighter color or do you want them blended closer to the darker color? So that you can adjust by clicking on that and moving that around. And you see how the blend area changed when I changed the position of this diamond. So what I'm going to do is keep that in the middle. And see now there's like a little bit of a balance between the two colors. 
And see, now that I have that, I'm gonna name that Blue Sky. And then right before I click off this window, I'm gonna show you guys how to add more than one color to a gradient. So anywhere on the bottom part of this little bar here, you can click anywhere on here, and it adds like a little stop for you. And just like all the other stops that we did earlier, we can change the color of this specific one. Because as you can see, I have blue colors within this gradient, and you can change this middle stop to be any other color that you want. So that way the two blues blend in with whatever color you choose. So I'm gonna click on this stop, and then I'm gonna click on color. And then let's choose like a pink. And as you can see, that pink is added onto the gradient. So it's blending in with this blue over here and blending in with this light blue over here as well. So I'm satisfied with that pink, so let's hit okay. And then just like the other stops, we can move that. I'm gonna keep it at 50. And I forgot to mention earlier that this bar here is like a scale from one to 100. So right here, this midpoint is 50, so that's halfway. This little stop with the dark blue, that's zero. And then this stop with the light blue, that's 100. But just so you guys know that, in case you wanna place a gradient in like the midpoint between this color and this color, that kind of thing. But then I gotta change the blend area between two color combinations. This dark blue and the pink, and then this light blue with the pink. And as you can see, there's diamonds between the two combinations of colors. So all you gotta do is adjust the diamonds to change the blend position. But I think Photoshop makes you adjust one diamond at a time. So I have the one. I think I'm good with that. And then to get the other diamond over here, all you gotta do is click the color that's over here and it pops up. So I'm gonna get rid of this pink and this gradient, but I just showed you guys this in case you wanna blend more than just two colors in a gradient. So to get rid of a stop, all you gotta do is hit delete. And sometimes the gradient tool just messes with you, so you gotta go back and choose um, whichever color that you want all over again. But yeah, now I have gradients that I had at first. So now that I'm satisfied with that, I can hit okay. So as you can see, my little cursor here looks like a plus sign. And now since I have the colors of my gradient selected, I can now draw it onto my Photoshop document. So like I mentioned before, I usually go from top to bottom. And since creating my gradient, this will be the top and this would be the bottom. So I'm free to draw that now. So let me start from here. And then I'm just gonna draw a straight line going to the bottom. But as you can see, this line is pretty much moving freely. But to make a straight line, all you gotta do is hold down the shift key and see how that line is straight. All I gotta do is drag it down there. Unfortunately, it doesn't hook onto the bottom of the canvas. So you just gotta, you know, eyeball it, I guess. And then lift up your finger from the mouse. And there, you got your gradient. But now since I have that gradient shown, I want some of that light blue to kind of show. After drawing it onto my Photoshop document, Photoshop created some sort of an image out of that gradient. So in order to reposition or resize this gradient, you would do it the same way you would do any image in Photoshop. So I'm gonna go up here to my move tool. And as you can see, the entire gradient is selected. So it takes up the entire canvas. So like the light blue would be somewhere behind these mountains, but I wanna move that up. So I'm gonna take one of these boxes down here, hold down the shift key to move it freely, and see how more of that light blue is showing as I'm moving this up. Cause this is what it looked like before. And here's what it looks like now. So more of that light blue is showing now. But I can also move this dark blue up a bit. So I'm gonna click on one of these boxes, hold down the shift key, and do the same thing. I can adjust like a little bit of it, then hit the enter key, and boom, you got yourself a gradient. Now in terms of adding clouds to the sky, that's a whole nother story, but this video mainly focuses on creating the sky, or the colors of the sky, however you wanna say it. But yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you create a gradient slash sky in Photoshop. So if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment, subscribe if you have it, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video.